It's time to focus on seniors with Helping Seniors TV. The television show designed to make you aware of senior issues and needs, as well as to acquaint you with the resources available to help you age in place and with dignity. Now, here's your host, Joe Steckler. I'm Joe Steckler, and welcome to Helping Seniors, the television arm of Helping Seniors of Brevard County. Our show is designed to provide you with information on how to develop your own aging and care plans. Our topic today is reverse mortgage funding. And joining me is Barbara McIntyre. Hi. Welcome, Barbara. Thank you. Good to see you, Joe. It's good to have you again. We've, we've done one show on this. Uh, it's like I every time I do a show with Dr. Sheldon, we can take the same script and do a different show. But... Hey, uh, with reverse mortgages, that's not so much the case because it's constantly changing. It is constantly changing. And but for the better. I want to make sure that that our viewers are all operating from a from an equal footing. Right. I want you to explain to our group what reverse mortgage funding is. Reverse mortgage funding is the name of my company, first off, that I work for. And it is based on using reverse mortgages which is tapping into the equity of your home in order to have financial resources to do a variety of things. So funding with the use of a reverse mortgage all ties together with using home equity to either pay off a mortgage, to tap into funds, to uh, meet needs, um, pay bills. But we got some specific things we're going to get into okay. later in the show. All right. We're going to do that. All righty. Because it, but now, you, your specialty is a reverse mortgage specialist. Right. Um, there's a couple other words added to it, but you let me say that so I don't get tongue-tied. <laughs> what, just exactly, what do you do as a reverse mortgage specialist? And I think it's important, Barbara, that you help our viewers understand what a reverse mortgage specialist is, because, folks, before the show, Barbara and I were talking, and I'm of the old school as I think that... Uh, we have good bankers and bad bankers. We have good realtors and bad realtors. We have good uh, stockbrokers. We have bad stockbrokers. Same thing in the reverse mortgage business. The same thing with anything to do with seniors and funding and money. And we, gotta, we have to we have to pick the right person that we trust. Absolutely. To do it. So. What, is a, what do you do as a reverse mortgage specialist? As a reverse mortgage specialist, what I do is I take it, I make it my responsibility to completely understand everything about my product. I take continuing education. I read every mortgage letter related to this one loan. A reverse mortgage is the only loan I do. And as a result, I am a subject expert about this loan. The reverse mortgage used to be considered a, what they call in the industry, a niche product. It wasn't offered by banks. It was only offered in, by a select group of people. And it only years ago was used as a mortgage of last resort. What my job is, is to meet with borrowers and their families to help them better understand all the caveats about the mortgage so that they can make the best decision as to whether the product will meet their needs. And so in doing that, I am an advisor and I have no problem when I meet with a client to say, maybe the mortgage is not for you. And I think that's the most important thing that people need to understand is that my, my favorite saying is knowledge is power. When you're investigating options to possibly better improve your retirement, you need to know all your options. You know, when you're talking what I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about Bill O'Reilly and, and mm -hmm. the, uh, the O'Reilly factor, and Bill's sitting up there straight, and he's got this, his guest sitting in a lower chair, so I started looking down <laughs> on him. I can't look down on you like that. But I'm just sitting there thinking that if I was Bill O'Reilly, I could ask some some questions that could put you on the defensive like crazy. But that's not what we're trying to do here today. Right. And and actually, Joe, I like to be put on the 
I, it's not put on the defensive. I like to be challenged about this product because usually when I'm challenged by someone who has doubts or concerns about the product, it's an opportunity for me to better explain what that person probably doesn't have a good understanding about. Okay, having said that, one of the shows I recently did was called The Dental Experience with Dr. Sheldon. <laughs> and we talked about the changes in dentistry over the year right. and how we've lessened the fear factor. I think probably a reverse mortgage has probably followed that same trend over the years. What is different now than it was, the reverse mortgage probably came out about 25 years ago. Uh, Ronald Reagan actually introduced the, the home equity conversion mortgage we call HECM, which is what it's really called, so. exactly. Yeah, He's the one that put the FHA reverse mortgage in place, and yes, it has changed. How has it changed from what it was to what it is now? Why is it safer now? What makes it a better product? And why, why should people be willing, Barbara, mm -hmm. to come to a person like you to ask, is this something that would be good for me? Can, we, can you explain Absolutely, that? I can. Back in those days, when people would say to me, what is the downside of a reverse mortgage? Without any hesitation, I would say it is the most expensive loan on the planet. The costs around a reverse mortgage were so expensive that for someone to do the mortgage, it truly was a last resort. People shouldn't, shouldn't and wouldn't and didn't spend that kind of money in closing costs unless they had no choice. Those are the biggest things that have changed related to upfront costs. Many loans no longer even have loan origination. They, few loans have servicing fees. The mortgage insurance premium, which is given to FHA to give you the protection and guarantees. Right. We've always had those, but right. now they've been modified. So depending on what someone might use the reverse mortgage for, the cost to the FHA could be much lower if they're not planning to draw large amounts of funds quickly. And they're gonna be higher if someone, let's say, is gonna use it to purchase a home. But so but it's, why did all those people in between that were getting a piece of the action. Why did they, we sort of cut them out of the picture? Or uh, have we? we? Well, we actually kind of have because the mortgage industry changed when the real estate market took a big hit and okay. when subprime lending and all the loans that were devised to help people get into, into mortgages early with, that needed time to build credit. And when all of that fell apart because of the real estate market's decline, many people that were selling mortgages and helping people with mortgages left the industry because they couldn't make money in forward lending or in reverse. Okay. But the reverse mortgage was always there. It was just now hand, and, and for a brief period of time, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, even MetLife got into the product. So it became, it that's when it started its trend towards being not so much a last resort, but when the big lenders were selling the product, that's when HUD and the organizations around helping seniors all started putting their heads together to figure out how to make it a better product for not only seniors, but people entering retirement. That is what has driven the changes in this product. Nowadays, we have 11,000 baby boomers a day moving into their retirement. Right. So we know that those baby boomers, being one myself, we planned for retirement, saved for retirement, but it went through downturns in our markets where our, our 401ks and IRAs were invested at least three times in our working life. And most pensions went away with companies. And pensions be became a thing of the past. Most, yeah. There are very few people that have a pension, looking forward to a pension. It's all our social security and our, our own invested retirement. So what happened is now we're retiring but we don't have the kinds of monies we thought we would have in retirement, but what we do have is a home. And most of the time, our home either has a small mortgage or it's free and clear. It is probably one of the biggest parts 
of our retirement planning because it's our a but large don't asset. Realize that, Barbara. Well, that's my job. Okay, and but see, people will think <laughs> like uh, if I own a quarter of a million dollar home, uh, the kids will think, "Well, gee, Dad, that's going to be my mine someday, and I'll sell it." So I want to make sure nothing happens to that. Of course. If you have a quarter of a million dollar home, the chances are that you put something else aside or you have a pension or you've done the planning so that you can you can live. But not always. Not always. Not always. Now, I, I know of retired people mm -hmm. that were extremely senior officers in the military. Right. Second marriage. And they got into all kinds of financial trouble with the second wife and that family. But they had their home. And I think it, after doing the shows with you, I have on radio and TV, and reading the articles you write for our newsletter, I have a better understanding of what mm -hmm. what reverse mortgage funding is and what it can do if you work with the right person or company and they have both parties at interest, best interest at equal parts. Absolutely. There's there's the cooker. There's, Absolutely. And that's what, yeah. Explain to our audience, I have one question here was that, how does one use a home equity line of What makes it a product that is good as part of your retirement package? The line of credit feature of a reverse mortgage when used as a part of your overall retirement plan, okay. gives you a resource of cash when you need it. So for example, let's say we're talking about the, the man with the, the very big house, whatever you said it was, a million dollar home. And let's say he has another million dollars in, invested with his financial planner. But recently, we've had a very large downturn in the markets. The markets have been very fluctuating. We've had some serious downturn, a little recovery back down again. When you draw funds out of a investment, when the market is down, it's called reverse dollar cost averaging. You are now taking out benefit, maybe dividends that you're using. Right. to. Okay, so it takes a lot longer to replace that income that that benefit in the market so okay. here is one use for 1k yeah exactly okay. whether whatever the investment is so here is one use when the markets aren't favorable you can strategically draw from that line of credit which is your housing wealth and leave your investments alone and the minute the markets are favorable again, you aren't starting from, you haven't reduced what's invested, so your recovery is much quicker. So this is where someone of wealth, someone affluent, might use a line of credit feature of a reverse mortgage for strategic retirement planning use. Now here's another use. Now let me ask you a question. Okay. Today. Let's say somebody has a million dollar home. Right. And they had a, a really bad thing in their portfolio and they've, they've lost a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a risk. And, or is there a risk? If, if, let's say if they had on a million dollar home, what kind of a line of equity line of credit could you establish on a million dollar home? We have a national lending limit on reverse mortgages that only allow us to base the benefit of the mortgage on a maximum of six hundred and twenty-five thousand five hundred. So with a that's million, that's on the value of the home. No, that's that is whether it's a million eight hundred thousand or it's worth oh, six hundred and twenty-five. The credit can be six hundred thousand. No, the maximum value of the home can be six twenty-five five. Oh, okay. The line right. of credit then is based on the borrower's age. So if you have a 6255 home and it's a 62 year old borrower, you may only be able possibly to have access to 350,000. If it's an 80 year old borrower, he may have access to 500,000. The benefit of a reverse mortgage is tied to the youngest borrower on titles age. Say that again. Now. The benefit of a reverse mortgage is tied to the youngest borrower on title. Whoever the youngest is, their age dictates the percentage of that home value or 625.5, whichever is less, 
Okay. What they can tap into. So let's say a person has a home and, and it's been established they have a $300,000 line of credit. Okay. And what if they had, with the downturn, the stock market, they needed to borrow 2000 a month. Perfect. 2000 a month out of that 300000 And they did it for a year. So they would take $24,000 out. Mm -hmm. They'd still, but what happens? How do they repay that 24000 what what happened? What do you do then? When that in that scenario, that borrower has asked to have that two thousand sent to them monthly, like a social security income. It now for every dollar that comes to them in cash out of that line of credit, it becomes part of their loan balance. There is interest attached to that loan balance, so that debt of twenty four thousand is increasing on paper. At any time that borrower wants to repay that money and interest or any part of it, they can actually write a check to the servicer of the reverse mortgage to pay that down if they choose. If they do that, it actually becomes available to them again in the same right. line of credit. So the line of credit can be repaid or not repaid. Either way, and I want to jump in and say one more thing about the line of credit. Okay. Unique to the reverse mortgage line of credit, unlike any other line of credit, like a bank's HELOC, they call them, <laughs> unique to the reverse mortgage line of credit, there's a growth feature. Written in the mortgage documents, the line of credit is going to be increasing at a compounding rate that is tied to whatever the interest rate is on the loan. So for example, I turned 62 this past April. I put a reverse mortgage on my home in Suntry. My home is paid off. I was able to tap into a $100,000 line of credit. My long-term plan in my retirement, and obviously I'm working, I have income, I'm not concerned about that at this time, and I think I'll be pretty set when I finally retire. But what I was concerned about is long-term health care. Okay. So that line of credit, when I'm 80, and I might need long-term health care, the growth in that line of credit could theoretically, with compounding growth and at about a 5.5% growth rate, could be about $300,000. So now if I need long-term health care, I can literally, like you said, have my lender start sending me Explain the money. Explain that in common language so the viewer understands what you just said. Well, how does it grow? What makes, where does the money come from to grow? The growth rate is contractual in the mortgage. It is written in the mortgage that whatever is available in the line of credit is going to have an increasing benefit. It's going to grow at a rate of growth equal to the interest rate in the loan. It's not tied to appreciating equity. It's not tried to tied to appreciating real estate value. Well, because the interest rate in the loan could be four, five, or six percent. Yes, but all so that's better than what the market is. Yes, it is. You're right. This is why. Why, why, won't people, why don't we talk about this more then? Well, we do. I do. I write articles. I talk to financial advisors. I, I would have to say the thing that I'm doing most these days is speaking to financial advisors, insurance agents, all the other people that advise boomers and seniors about retirement planning because it absolutely is going to be not a niche product like it was before. I would not be surprised if you see banks offering the product sooner than later because it is a better alternative than a HELOC, which banks offer now. What is a HELOC? You a that HELOC term is a home equity line of credit, okay. very common to every bank. It also loans access to equity in someone's house. But a HELOC, mm -hmm. A home equity line of credit offered by a bank requires payments, either interest only, interest in principal. It requires a committed monthly payment. In addition, the home equity lines of credit HELOCs that the banks offer are not good forever. They have a date 
written in the contract that the funds are no longer available. They also have a date written into the contract that the payment will be converted to an amortized loan. And so people will start having to make higher payments to repay it. This is a loan that has been offered by banks for years and years. The reverse mortgage line of credit does all of those things and more because it compounds its growth, does not require payments, but certainly allows for someone to make payments if they want, never will be called due, is not tied to the real estate market. In other words, if the real estate value drops based on the contract, the actual mortgage document, there it's is- It's not gonna change. No, it's gonna increase and there could possibly, if we had the same thing happen that happened a few years ago, hopefully never we'll see that again, where real estate values really dropped, that line of credit growth will continue. It will be the same. It's going to continue to grow and could ultimately be more than because your house value. Because it has a higher value. interest rate. And just because the nature of how the mortgage is. Yes. Do brokers like to have you talk around their clients? Do do a financial advice? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, they do. Are they? They want me to educate them. Financial advisors. That's different than. When you say broker, it, I was I mean, like, you got somebody you, selling somebody that it makes somebody step by selling stocks and mutual funds and well, stuff like that. Well, th this is the thing. It seems like yeah, because what you're saying to me uh -huh. could infringe on, on what they do because actually not because what I am giving a financial advisor is another strategic way cool. to preserve their client's portfolio. The biggest challenge I think financial advisors have today is how are we going to continue to preserve our, their portfolio if they're retiring now, if they live 30 years longer? And it is a daunting task because we don't have the growth. We don't have, I mean, it's a daunting task. I, I feel sorry. Yeah, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm amazed when I hear you talk about it. Let's see, and there are a lot of people have three quarter of a million dollar homes today. A lot of people have them. They were on water. They bought it at the right time of Florida. Absolutely. It. And it's ridiculous for them to deny themselves some of the pleasures of life, going out, having broccoli, cheese, cheddar soup, and Panera's, which is a big... Oh, animal. that's my I, favorite I, too, Joe. I, I, I shouldn't talk say. about it. I know. <laughs> it's not so great for us, but it's but really good. It's good. Um, <laughs> With a hunk of bread. <laughs> but, but my point is that we could withdraw out of assets that we have to help us, it can help us for just living a better life, traveling if you don't have aches and pains like I do. Oh. Um, I like what you said about long-term care because there's a new annuity product in the market which insurance people are selling. It's, uh, it's, it's a product tied to annuity rates and uh, where it lets the money uh, come back to heirs when the person dies, but still have money in there for long-term care. It's a new product. It's a, I'm aware you, of it. Are you aware I of it? I am aware of it. And I want to also say, even though I don't partner with anyone to sell a reverse mortgage to fund a long-term care policy, it is an absolute great use because what happens as you get older, the, the your costs, let's say you didn't have a long-term care policy, but you wanted one. The older you are, the more expensive it is. The benefit to having a resource to pay for health care is huge because that's going to be one of the largest expenses a boomer is, a, a, and senior is going to face in their retirement is how do we care for ourselves. Okay. So two things. In my case, I want to use the money to pay for the care. But in someone else's case, they may have a long-term care policy. They might want to use the resource to pay the premium on the policy. So again, the use of HECM proceeds, reverse mortgage proceeds, can be used any way and for any need. Well, let me, we have a short amount of time. Okay. One, one of the things that many seniors have a problem with mm -hmm. are the roofs. Yeah. And let's say that somebody lives uh, on the beach side and they've got a $130,000, $40,000 home and needs a new roof. And they, they're living on Social Security alone. And they're in their late 70s, early 80s. And their home is paid for. Mm -hmm. What would be 
anything wrong with them taking a line of credit out of their home for $10,000 and maybe spending $5,000 to repair the roof? Not a thing. That's exactly what, what it's for. What is the downside? Is there a downside? Anymore, there is no downside. Reason being, we have products. It's more like forward lending now. We have products that we modify the costs based on the interest rate. I virtually have a loan that someone actually who is using it just as an insurance policy, they just want to have that bucket of line of credit available for the, the possibility, virtually almost a no-cost loan. Barbara, one of the greatest calls that we get from people in need is they need roof repairs and they have no money to do it, yet they probably have the money that could be put into a reverse mortgage. So maybe Kay needs to call you more about some of these clients. I'm serious. I'm no, not she joking. should. Anytime, not anytime someone 62 or older who owns a home has a financial need, we should always look to see if the house could be a resource. Even if they have a mortgage, it might be. We just have to look to see. It isn't a, it isn't a cure-all for everyone. I mean, the roof, you know, has to be, it, it, we'd have to see how bad the roof is. And I have actually in the past arranged for a roofer to put a roof on someone's home, knowing that he would get paid after the reverse mortgage was completed because she couldn't qualify for the reverse mortgage until the roof went on. And we had a local roofer in Brevard County which I'd love to say their name. <laughs> no, it's a, but this is one of the reasons. Do that. Barbara I mean, that, I was a, I loved it. He yeah. he absolutely said yes, and he put a roof on her house. We closed her loan. She used then the reverse proceeds to pay him and have a line of credit. So there's always a way to solve a, a problem. We're almost out of time, but okay. You know, I I think that. Uh, we probably will do another show. I think so. We'll but, always have something new to talk about. That's for sure, Joe. Well, we're out of time, okay. and and but uh, it's it's been an extremely informative thing, especially for me too. I'm sure that you'll get more business and <laughs> that people need that kind of help. And I want to thank you, viewer, for watching today's episode of Helping Seniors, especially with Barbara McIntyre, a more mortgage reverse mortgage specialist. I'm Joe Stackler. Thank you for joining our program today. I'd like to remind you that our senior information line is available to you at 321-473-7770. There you can get help and direction that could be helpful for your specific situation or circumstances. The work of helping seniors is very important, but we can't do it alone. That is why our sponsors here in Burrard County are so important. I'd like to thank our many area sponsors, businesses and medical providers who support the mission of helping seniors that help us carry the cost of our media efforts. If you'd like to join us either as a business partner or simply donate as an individual, we would welcome your call at 321-473-7770. You're always welcome to visit our website at www.helpingseniorsofbrevard.org. Thanks so much for your help. It does make a difference.